Hello, welcome to Have A Go and I'm Alan. Today we're going to be having a poke at these bearings again. So my initial thought was that with the pitting there might be a bit of a write off. However, some people on the Paul's Garage Discord brought up using epoxy to fill in all the pitting in the holes and it might be rescuable. Now before I go putting epoxy on these I'm going to clean up the, the surface first. Isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush. Because it doesn't matter what type of glue you're using if the surface is crap it's not going to stick. Okay, the toothbrush isn't doing a very good job. Okay, it just fits. Now it's working better. Alright, time to try something new. Never used this stuff before, but there's a first time for everything. Ah, I just noticed it has a little note here, mixing tray, with a couple of little, little wooden uh, spatulas. Looks like I won't need the ice cream container lid then. This is the one with the big hole in it. Right, I'll put that there. Do not use while pregnant. I think I'm pretty safe. Finally got a first aid kit out here. Had me a little bit worried. I already have the fire extinguisher out here. So as well as the fire extinguisher, now I have the first aid kit too. See so you in, through the magic of editing. I'll see you in about five or six days. Right, this is how the epoxy has come out. Very hard. Looks to be pretty tough. Just need to sand the surface down again so it's flat. However, picked up a respirator. Is I cool? Bit of advice I was given once is to put safety gear on machinery you're going to use it with in such a way that you can't actually use the machine without picking up the safety gear. So. I'll put that there. So next time I use the grinder, or certainly the I won't forget. I'm going to drill a through hole in this, then I'll be able to indicate on the bottom part where I'm going to drill that. I think I might stamp letters on these so I know which uh, which ones they paired up with. T for tail and H for head. Okay, this might be obvious to anyone else, but I've noticed that the H is clearly visible in this one. However, T is there, it's not really recognisable. So now I know for future reference to use the, those punches on nice surfaces, not rough cast. 
I do not think my hole punch will reach, or center punch, nope, not going to reach, so I'll use a nail. It'll be bad for the nail, but that's the nail's problem. I could tap those holes straight away, or I could make Cindy wait and drill these out to six more first. In case anyone's wondering, the cat's sitting just on the step outside the shed. She doesn't. She doesn't come in here. He has in the past and wound up locked inside by accident. She's not in a hurry to repeat that. Alright, now for the other one. I'm not backing off the tap because when I do, I can feel it's not actually breaking chips or anything, it's just backing off the tap. With the metal um, tapping that I did in steel, I could feel the chips breaking when I backed off the tap like this. But with this Zamac, it crumbles to dust anyway. Nice and tight so when I drill them they don't move. Normally I wouldn't bother with this stretching stuff, but there are times when it's useful. Ah yeah, still have to drill out these to 6mm. It is nice to not have to countersink these. I'm also using these letter punches to indicate which way around the top side goes as well. In progress. Now to fit it to the lathe. Take the carriage off. Right. Need to drill mounting holes on these now, so I can mount them onto here. Needs to be far enough enough away from the top bearing that I can actually turn the head of the bolt. I'm not happy about how high these parts are sitting in this vise. However, I need the wooden block underneath so that I don't drill into the um, ways of the bit of the drill press vise. Now the tricky part here is that I need to put this at just the right height. You may recall how I made the um, jibs screws for the ways. I'm basically going to make up another one with a pointy end and then use it as a transfer punch basically. This is awkward because I have to do it at right angles to the surface, not to the bench.
I'm putting these back on all the time to make sure that the through hole or the lead screw itself is parallel to the ways. Right now that I've got those mounted I can use the hole as a draw guide. Well, the good news is I got through. The bad news is the drill just broke. Guess who forgot to push record? Alright, I got a new drill bit and I finished drilling this hole. Unfortunately, the hole is right where it goes all the way through the side of, of the casting. So it's going to be another blind hole tap, I'm afraid. Fortunately for me, it seems that Bosch's drill bits are better than their countersinks. Before I put the um, bearing caps on, this is actually high enough that it interferes with the clamps for the carriage. This is the pattern for the half nut. The way that, the way that this will work is it'll go it'll be behind the apron obviously, but when it's rotated like like this it's disengaged. When it, you turn the knob, the threads on this will grip onto the lead screw. Then when you turn the lead screw, it'll go up and down, turn the lead screw and this moves along like how it is now. And seeing as it will be anchored onto the carriage casting or the hole I still have to drill through here, the lead screw moving the half nut along means that the lead screw will also be moving the carriage that the half nut will be attached to. So I just have to finish doing the threads This focus. This has um, threads 3D printed, but they are not quite right. So I need to work on that. This will be the handle for it. Where the handle will go here. Disengaged. Engaged. So I still have to cast those. And this is the handle on the end of the lead screw. This is what will this is the control that will move the carriage forward and backward. Turn this and the carriage will go forward and backward precisely. So it's all coming together. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.